Good morning, I should say good early afternoon everybody and welcome to another part of Motorizing My Uncle. Well, here we got the items that I showed you on that other video. We got the actuator, we got the wire strip so we can connect it. And uh, I think it may work out just very, you know, really well. And we've got our reading apparatus here, both from the American Science and Surplus. So it came in very quick, and as a matter of fact, they shipped it to me priority mail, even though I did not pay for priority mail. They're very, very nice that way. And uh, they don't always do it, but uh, they did uh, this time. I appreciate that. Now, what I am going to do here... As soon as I find out where it's going to be... It's going to be uh, have to be on the head stick, of course. Which means I may have to relocate this piece of plywood but it's only screwed in over here and over here on L brackets and uh, it's not glued in as you can see it's moving uh, I could flip it around and have it on this side but it will be difficult to work on this because I may have to take this uh, threaded rod and replace it but I'm not sure yet Right now, today, I want to concentrate on working the mouth trigger. Now, I'm going to show you something on the mouth trigger. This works just this little movement here, like I'm doing now, moves the mouth about like that. Okay, in order to get the mouth to open any more than that, I really have to pull down hard, five or six pounds at least and it doesn't really open that much more to make it worthwhile so I think the solenoid if it just moves it like this is perfect I also fixed up the hair a little bit I'm getting tired of looking at it sticking out so I just patched it up and glued some more in there and I'm going to be doing more on that but I'm going to be working on the head too but right now, I want to concentrate on the mouth trigger. So that's what we're going to do now with this here door lock solenoid. This is going to be very difficult for me to show you because I'm going to be holding this here. But naturally, I'm not holding it so it, the whole thing's going to jump up in the air. Okay. But what I'm going to do is set this camera on a tripod and you can look at the mouth. When I hold this, this is just a temporary thing I put in here. So I'm just going to hold it against the shaft here. So I'm going to go around the front now and I'm going to set the camera up and you can see how his mouth moves. Now that was with that was just holding it here. What I'm going to be doing is eliminating this blue ring here, which was for my finger because I had to use two fingers to pull it. And um, just going to use a uh, a rod in here. Now this whole thing is plastic, so I have to be careful now. And. Uh, it's, it's a push-pull, as I showed you in the unboxing video, if you watch that, from the science surplus place. And um, this whole thing is plastic, and it shoots out. If you reverse polarity, it goes out. And if you reverse the polarity again the other way, she draws in. 
So um, I got it so it only draws in because it'll return on its own from the springs that are inside the head, plus the rubber and everything that's here and all the other stuff around his mouth returns it to the natural position, which is what we want. So before we do anything else to this, we are going to have to remove this, but I got to keep the spacing the same. So what I am going to probably do is either use this plywood or use a narrower piece of wood and put it on this side of the stick so that this solenoid can be on the front where this is. See, the head is turned a little bit. So I need this solenoid in line with this, which is the face forward direction. If you look over on this side, it's got a hole right straight through and two screws fit right in there, self-tapping into the plastic. And you can see that I can adjust it. So it'll go on the side of the head stick. Once I get this board out of here, it could go on the side of the head stick like this. I can mount it, cut off the excess, and fasten it there so I can put a screw at the bottom and then maybe a cable tie or something on the top. This came with it and also this actuator rod which goes through here and comes up like that for the door lock. So this I could use, cut it down and hook this to the mount trigger and that will be my actuator. It's already made up, why not? I got the plus marked here because this is going to enable the solenoid to be in the right position to go pulling down. These are here pieces that they enclosed with the actuator. I probably won't need, but you know what? They'll go in my scrap box, my nuts and bolts and screws, because I can always use them. Right, let me show you what I did here. We got a, another piece of wood over to here. So now I can remove this piece and this still keeps me at the 14 inches spacing here. Now I can either remove this and relocate it or I could take it out altogether or I could take it and move it down below the motor over on this side. Which may be the best option because we need to keep both sides even. Right now we got one here and one here, but we still need one in the front. So we can drop that lower below, even down into here, gets past the motor. So that's what we're going to do uh, before we can even connect up the other, um, before we can even connect this up. And this is ready to be mounted. And what I did is I cut off the end of the uh, mounting bracket because it doesn't need to go below that. It'll be fastened like I showed you earlier in this video. So we're going to do that now. All right, I got this mounted with two C-clamps. One down here that happens to have a nut on it with that bracket I showed you and one up here. Now I got the head turned as far as it'll go. So I wasn't able to put screws in here, but it actually works out better using the hose clamps around here. Now it's rigid. Now all I got to do is bring this up just a little bit. And I took my big finger ring out of here. And I got to put a little coupling from here to here. And that should operate. All goes well, that should operate. I got to extend the wires here. They're not quite long enough. because we need movement this whole this whole thing will turn now the way this is on here now this is as far as the head will go here there's no danger as you can see there's no danger here I got about a half inch of space between this board and the bottom of this solenoid and when it turns this whole thing is just going to turn and this will be on the flat when this turn when the head is forward 
this part here will be on the flat so you don't even have to worry about this sticking out and getting in the way and when the head is over here like that will still be good and we'll verify that by turning this head once I get this mechanism in here and operating the way I want. We're just about ready to hook this up after I add some wire to it and we're going to see how the mouth goes. And I got the wires stripped here and ready to connect. So I'm going to be connecting a piece on about a little better than a foot long here. And it can be cut off afterwards. And uh, I have this kind of cord so it's a little hard to see the plus or minus. Actually, one is uh, silver and one is uh, copper colored. But still in all, we like to mark them with a, some red tape which I have in my electrical box. Alright folks, you ready for the uh, moment of truth here? Temporarily I put a, a wire tie in here, I don't know if you can see it. I think you can probably see that. little red wire tie, see that? That's gone through the little yellow finger loop, which is the original loop, which is way too small for my fingers, and to this plunger. Now I, I brought the plunger up a little bit, so it's in its forward throw, so when I put the battery to it, and watch this. All right, you want to look at the mouth now? Let's go. All right, Uncle Dorkle's going to start yakking at you now. Here we go. My name is Uncle Dorkle. How are you today? Now, as long as we hold this down, the mouth stays open. Of course, it's drawing two and a half amps. So we primarily when we're actually doing a talking, he's actually saying something. When he is not speaking, his mouth will not be held open. If the case is, if he does one of these Ooh! things, that would be the exception. I'm very happy with that. His, his uh, head is looking pretty much straight ahead. So I want to show you behind here. Rod is straight ahead. And you can see that the there's plenty of room for this solenoid. This is perfect, I'm telling you. I should have ordered this thing in the first place. Sometimes when your, your instincts tell you, hey, I think that thing might work. I originally didn't order this. I ordered that other pull-pull solenoid, and I knew that it wouldn't do it. But, you know, I could use it for something else, I guess. But anyways, now when this swings over to here, there's still going to be plenty of clearance, so we don't even have to check that out. So we've got that made, and we don't... I don't think we need to put that wood on the uh, back side there. I think we're doing good because the more stuff I put in here, the heavier it's going to be. So, yeah. yeah. That's good. Can't help it about the noise. You know, this can be heard too. But if I was going to use an electric drill originally, you would really hear that. But the back, I'm, I'm going to probably close it in with some kind of a cover that I can take off to, you know, be or have a rounded back to accommodate this because this has to, this has to be out this far in order to uh, accommodate this, which comes almost up to the nut over here. So I really can't, you can't take that off because you need the strength 
because when this is pushing the head this way or this way, you need the strength in there. I'm very happy with this solenoid. I'm almost tempted to order another one for spare. Well, so I didn't use the actuator rod that came with it. No need for it. I can use it for something else. It looks like an eighth inch or thereabouts uh, rod and these little screws we can use. So eventually we're going to get a 12 volt battery. We're not going to order it online. We're going to get it local. The shipping and everything will cost too much. The science place does have batteries too, but by the time you spend for the shipping, you can get it here locally because batteries are pretty heavy to ship. So on this wires, all these wires here, they're all going to come to a terminal block or a strip or something, which will be probably down in here somewhere. All the connections will go to that. It'll probably be another one for the motor uh, circuitry. The one that I'm going to have over here will be for the remote control. The remote control, as I said, will contain a double pole, double throw, center off switch. It'll have two of them. One for the head controller and the other one for the eyes. And the simple reason for the eyes is you want to be able to stop the eyes. Reverse them, even though if I'm doing the character uh, unless I'm sitting in front, and I might very well be, so I can watch him. But with an 8 to 10 foot, a uh, 6 to 8 feet, I should say, uh, remote control wire and a little control box in my hand, I can be out in front of this guy. I can be looking at him and make sure that the eyes are in the right position. And also, I can watch the head, but of course I'm going to put them safeties in there for the head. Now, before we close out this video, I would like to fatten up these scrawny little spindly arms of his. Now, you're probably wondering what this cable is. If you followed Building Uncle Dorkle, there's 24 segments to that series. And uh, those of you who have been following it will know exactly what this is. This is the pull-up cord for his right arm. Actually, his arm belongs kind of squeaky and well 113 years old would you expect his arm belongs out that way uh, but it's very hard to pull but I'd like to get some more meat on these arms of his but it's very hard to put a shirt on him even as skinny as he is mostly because his hands are so damn big but gloves were the easiest thing for me to work because uh, I was able to get almost realistic looking hands and um, fingernails, which is cardboard and uh, painted, and then uh, kind of like dirt, because after all, the guy probably hasn't taken a bath since he was 50 years old. <laughs> I will be happy to have his head turn a little faster, his mouth to move and his eyes to move. I can't ask for anything more than that. Then I'm gonna try to get him to look a little better without making them weigh down too much. Thanks for watching. Don't go away because there's more of this series to come of motorizing my uncle. <laughs>